Okay guys, so if you have been following my ultra subwoofer comparison video, we have the last, the last dog in the fight just arrived. So I'm going to be doing this video. This is, out of all three of them, the smallest subwoofer. Um, that being said, I have also learned to never count Validine out of a fight. So we are going to see what this is like. It's the smallest but also the most expensive subwoofer. Both the other two are 80,000 South African Rand, re recommended retail price at the time of this video. This is 115,000 Rand. So it's a, it's a good 35,000 Rand more expensive than the other two. So let's get into it. Let's see if it's worth it. This also dips down the lowest. Um, the Ultra goes down to 16 or 17 hertz, where the PV can go down to 13. This dips down to, I just saw now, 10 hertz, 10.5 hertz for a sealed enclosure. It's almost unheard of. So I want to see if it can really do that. Um, so big shoes to fill, 1250 watts nominal, 3000 watts peak, like I say never look at the peak, look at the nominal watts, so it's 1250 watts, um, this is the DD12+, plus. DD being a digital drive, um, this is the 12 inch, so there's a 10, there's a 12, there's a 15 and there's an 18, I would love to get my hands on the 15 and the 18 but they are monumentally expensive that 18 inch that you actually want the biggest one i think it's just shy of 200 000 rand for a subwoofer so yeah it's monumentally expensive but let's see um i was so impressed with the db 15 that i have i have to have to hear this so let's get to the unboxing and then after this unboxing i'm going to do one big video with all three of these subs next to each other playing a few different demos and I will let you guys know what my verdict is um, what each sub does strength and weaknesses because um, there's always things that one sub is going to do better than the other um, so yeah so let's let's see so let's get to cutting this open uh, thanks again before I get into this video um, thanks for Planet World for bringing this sub for demo and lending it to me. Carl, thanks a lot. Richard, thanks a lot. Guys, I appreciate it. Um, so anything you want from Planet, give me a buzz or call them directly for the closest um, dealer in your area. Okay, I'll also link their description at the bottom of the video um, with my own stuff. And all their stuff is also available for me. So um, they do Validine, they do the M&K cinemas that I do, on the smaller end, they do Jamo, um, they do Dolly, they do Parasound. On the bigger stuff, they do Storm Audio. So some very nice brands that they have under their roof. Okay, so let's get the little box on the side first. Um, gathering, this is accessory kit. Um, I'll come close and show you guys what is in here. The, the packaging is just already, you can see I'm going to tilt this down so we can get a bit better view of the box and the stuff. So you can already see where this price is coming into play. They actually give you a disc in here, um, some info, a whole booklet on the subwoofer. Okay, this has been unboxed before once, so I'm going to just put that to the side. You have your remote. And it's actually like a full-size remote, not a small dinky remote. And look at all the stuff you can do on here. There's theater, rock, jazz, games, custom, EQ, um, night mode, volume up, set, presets, menu. This is like a remote you get with a full-on receiver. This is very impressive. Then, get your hee-hee, Michael Jackson gloves. Um, high gloss, I think this is high gloss. Yeah, gloves. Trust me, guys, high gloss, it's a nightmare. So, yeah, you have... Uh, this is all for the microphone and stuff. So you have the USB cable. Um, let me set this down so I can use both my hands. 
So that's the microphone cable. Now here's a long RCA. And here is XLR. You have XLR. I'm guessing this is all to do with the microphone. Here's the mic stand. Just that they give you the microphone. And this is not. You can see all this stuff is high-end microphone. So I'm guessing a big chunk of this budget is just on the microphone. Oh, look at this. Look at this. It comes in a proper carry case. This is, this is professional stuff. Yep. This looks a lot like the Umic one, but it's not. So it's Validine, it's a Validine microphone. There's the XLRs. That's how you're going to be connecting it. Where is that? There's your little foam um, for all the wind and distortion over the microphone. To put that on and this, because I use a lot of microphones, that's just to connect it to your stand. Because this does not have a, so if you have a proprietary stand, you'll connect this to your stand and screw it in there. If you don't have a proprietary stand, you are going to be using this. Um, so this can just stand down on whatever surface you're going to have it. And remember when you're doing your microphone calibrations, you always want this facing upright. A microphone should face upright, not towards the speaker, not towards the screen, upright. Okay, so let's put this back. I'm actually going to test this out because I'm a, I'm a big fan of calibration. Um, you need to be able to calibrate your kits accordingly. Okay, I'm going to put this back. Okay, well, how did this go? Oh, like so. I'm going to close that back up like so. Okay, we flip this back in the box. Just going to be putting this all back in there. I'll use this later. I'm just going to run this sub without calibration first to give you an idea what it is like out of the box. And then we'll run calibration to see what an impact we can do on the room. Because the room is always going to come into play. It's going to do different things. So when you listen to a, something, a sub or whatever at, at, at my place, it's being calibrated to my room. So when you take it home, um, you might not get the same desired effect. You need to calibrate it as well or get a professional to come and help you and integrate that sub or speaker or whatever into your room. So what else do we have here? Just uh, some protection to make all of these packages fit. There's another, ah, just some more foam protection. So I'm guessing the next is the subwoofer. And it's a box in a box. You're gonna use my old trusty roll method. Some anti-moisture bag for shipping. So let's get to rolling this stuff out. Get the legs out the way and roll. This is when not being the biggest sub actually comes into a positive with unpackaging it, unboxing it. Because these big subs, they are a huge draw to unbox. As you saw in my 16 Ultra video. Okay, just put this box back in there. Okay, but I'm gonna leave that there so we can, let's see, we can tilt the camera down a bit more. Gonna go slightly back. I'm gonna, where do I put those gloves? Use the gloves guys, trust me. Um, otherwise, fingerprints are everywhere. One thing with eye gloss to, to keep in mind, it's always going to start scratching with time. That is why they take such um, care when packaging it, you'll see all of the, the gloves, the felt linings, all that stuff. Same as of the, the SDS. But this is actually, I don't know if it's going to come across. This is beautiful. You can already see some of the scratch marks as it's been moved across the surface. But can you see on camera, 
this is actually a wood veneer it's not just gloss i can see a wood ebony inlay inside so this is a wood veneer and then it's got insane lacquer over it it looks like you can look into the sole of the speaker i feel these feet can actually screw off they don't supply any bigger feet but you can add something like the sound path isolation feet um i've already ordered a set for the svs because i do feel it does need it um these small feet they just don't isolate the sub enough okay so let's roll this completely out the box That to the side, bring this back into focus. Right, go back more. Like that, like that. Still a heavy sub. Okay, let's get this off. Let's get this off. Underneath the feet. Okay, felt it back to the side. I must say, guys, this finish is nice. Curved design on the cabinet. Can you guys see? It's got a bit of a curve to it, so it's not just a square box. Let's take the grill off. Everything's got a nice feel to it, as you would imagine at this price. It's it's super premium. The grills, no shortcuts taken here. This is nice. Oh, I see there's a slot in the grill here. Can you see if the light will pick it up? There, can you see? So this screen, if you keep the cover on, is going to illuminate through there. So you can actually see what's going on. Very small little nice touches. Let's see what's here. Okay, so here we have USB and the mic. Those are for calibrations. You have your infrared for remote. You have your display to see what's going on the screen. Volume, I see it's already at 50%. And it's got a nice feel to the volume. It's got like notches. You can feel the increments, I like that. Crossover, it's already set to max. Oh no, it's not, this just, uh, this just turns around. So, it's gonna show you on the screen to where you wanna set your crossover. And then your auto EQ, that is a button. We'll see what that is for on the calibration subwoofer very much the same as on the svs it's a fiberglass composite design i actually saw the internals of this sub i'm going to see if i can post a pic the basket on this sub is almost bigger than the sub itself it is an insanely huge magnet basket construction um, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can post a pic so you guys can see. But okay, let's get to the back. It's, a, it's a, such a small compact design. Um, something that Validine is good for. Uh, look at that amplifier, man. You can already see the hand marks where someone didn't use the gloves. Gloss. But this being the ebony gloss, it's nice. So we have Ethernet on a subwoofer. That will be for updates. S video, RS232, in and output. XLRs again, input, through output, high pass output. The most options I've ever seen on a sub, I'm honest. You have just there's a lot of stuff on this. Power hard on off connections for your speakers but you won't you can use those but you've got xlr so why use those um mind you xlr is going to be in and those are going to be speaker wire out so you'll use them most of us won't run it like that if you're going to be using the lfe where is the lfe there's the lfe yeah this thing has settings for years let me get my head around this line level control then we have speaker level control. My goodness. High pass cross over 100 hertz or 80 hertz. I like 80, but if your speaker can't handle it, do 100. So I'm going to be doing 80. You have a video output. A video output on a subwoofer. 
What? Why? Uh, external remote 12 valve trigger you're going to use that then you have so many RCAs left right I'm guessing it's an input output and oh it's through output and input we'll be using the LFE on that side like I stated um, S video as well <laughs> what the hell um, okay I've never seen so many options and settings on this sub this ebony finish is ridiculous you know what this reminds me of I'm just gonna put this down again you know what this reminds me of just in a much darker fashion um, monitor audio gold and platinum have that ebony finish just if you look at it quickly you won't notice it is black it's only when let's see if we can get the lights on it again can you guys see see when the light goes on it this is spectacular um, guys I can see why this is the most expensive sub out of the three subs there's so much going on here but that is going to be worth nothing if it doesn't sound good so let's get this up and playing I need to pop out quickly as soon as I'm back I'm going to start jamming this thing playing it um, I don't know if Carl, did you guys play this in? Um, I'm going to play it in for a while in any case. I'm going to be demoing some movie content, doing some gaming, um, listening to music. Because that is sometimes something that is looked over with all of these subs. Guys, make it for movies, but they, they miss that we, we audio, audio files, audio guys and girls like to listen to music. Um, and myself, when I listen to these subs, the first thing I listen to is not the amount of bass that I can hear, but it's the amount of tactile bass that I can feel. That for me is the, the difference between a cheap sub and an expensive sub. Anything can go doof, doof, doof and woo, woo, and shake the room. But to have tactile bass where there's like a... Um, a bomb or a EMP it goes off you get that and it goes through the floor and it shakes the couches without vibrating everything to pieces that for me and then that base must be solid and that's something the 15 inch Validine did that no other sub of mine has done it gives a, a thumping solid mid base so it doesn't just go down low it gives you that in your chest that I love. So I'm hoping that this is like the combination of both those worlds that I'm getting with the X12 and the SVS Ultra and then getting back into what Validine is all about. So if this sub can combine all of these subs, it will come out king. Um, again, not that there's a king when you get to this level. It's what do you want? I like tactile bass, but I also like a solid punchy bass. Um, and I've not yet been able to find one sub to do all of that. Be tactile, be punchy, be quick and responsive. So Validine, are you going to answer my questions? We'll see guys, stay tuned. The next video is going to be the big one. I'm going to put all of these next to each other, play some demos. Till next time, stay safe. Cheers. Bye.